Hello and welcome to another video on how to secure yourself financially. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is to make a quick recap of the beginner guide of two financial statement. And here, the SEC.gov, this security and, ex and exchange commission, they mentioned that if you're able to read nutritional labels or read baseball box score or soccer box score, you can learn the basic part of financial accounting. And to learn uh, and learn to read the basic financial statement, if you can learn or if you can follow for a loan, sorry, if you can follow a recipe or a plan apply for a loan, you can learn the basic of accounting. And the basic, they're difficult. So the TLDR or the two long didn't read of this is section is this will give you sense when you're able to see some set of financial statement and gain some confidence and understand what's going on behind that. So much like the C, uh, this CPR course, this cardiopulmonary resuscitation teach you the basic of how to do that, but it won't train you to be a cardiac doctor, learn the basic part of, and how to read the basic part of financial statement, will give you this confidence, but won't train you to be an accountant. And the whole point of this is, if you're, or in my case, since I want to be a business owner, at least for my consulting, uh, I need to know at least the basics to have a notion of what's going on and where I'm going here, specifically in the financial aspect. So the financial statement, after all, they show you the money. Uh, so from the Cuba Goody Jr. in Modern Lines, from the movie Jeremy Maguire, show me the money. That's what financial statement do. So they show you the money, and there are four types of them. You have balance sheet that show what a company owes, and yeah, what a company owns and what it owes at a fixed point in time. The income statement, how much money a company made and spend over a period of time. The cash flow statement the exchange of money between the company and the outside world, and the statement of the shareholders, which shows the change in interest of the shareholders over time. So this section only focuses on the first three financial statements. So the balance sheet, the TLDR, is a snapshot of the company liabilities, assets, and shareholders' equity. So, after all, assets are anything that a company owns that has value. So, for example, uh, if you see yourself as a, as a business, you, a natural person, you see yourself as a business, your time is a, one of the most precious value, or your precious assets. So, assets liabilities, which is our obligations that a company has to pay to vendors or suppliers, obligation that a company has, and the shareholders' equity, which is the money left over if a company decides to sell off all of their investment and pay off uh, all its liabilities. So that leftover money belongs to the shareholders. And Generally, this is layout, if you look at here, Yahoo here. So generally, this is the layout following is the formula assets are equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity. And sometimes you can find that uh, in an horizontal layout or in this case, in a vertical one, where here, uh, you have at the top all the assets listed followed by the liabilities and shareholders equity. So 
the assets is generally listed based on how quickly they can be converted into cash. So you have current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are assets that, is, that a company expects to transform within a year or less. So for example, inventory and non-curing assets are, are, are assets that a company will take longer than a year to do that. And also we have inside of this uh, something called the fixed assets, where these are assets that are not for sale because help our business to run. And the total liabilities, or in the liabilities, these are generally listed based on their due dates. So you have current liabilities, uh, obligations that a company expects to pay off within a year or less, and long-term liabilities. And right below we have shareholder equity, where this indicate is how much money the inventors or the founders have invested in the company stocks plus or minus profit or losses since inception. So even though this balance sheet show you is the assets, liabilities and shareholder equity, but it doesn't show you is how much money a company generate in kind of statement uh, it does that. So the bottom line of that income statement show you if a company made profit or not. And this uh, usually uh, you can think of this as a set of stairs when you start at the top and every time you go one step down you make a deduction associated with earning that revenue. So broadly speaking, at the beginning you start with the total amount of revenue and at the bottom of the stair, you know if a company made profit or not. So again, broadly speaking, you start with the total amount of revenue and once you go one step down the stair, you make a deduction associated with that earnings such as merchandise returns or uh, discount okay, to reach the net revenue. And they call that net because you can think a fishing net. So all the things that left in the net uh, is uh, similar to what's going on here in this income statement. Once you deduct uh, usually after the net pro the net revenue, the uh, which is here after the after the net revenue, you deduct the cost of revenue. So how much a company spent to produce a good and service over a period of time. So you now reach to the gross profit, and here it's important to deduct things like operating expense. So Expense that a company incur for uh, money uh, or expense that a company incur for their day-to-day -day business activities like administrative salaries, marketing, research and development. So you reach now, once you deduct that, to the operating uh, or to the operating profit uh, before the uh, interest and income taxes. It's also important to mention that here you deduct things like amortization, uh, depreciation, and once you deduct the interest from the ink from the operating profit, okay, and the interest is well. The TLDR is money that a company borrow or uh, ask for loans, okay? And it can impact the income statement because it can increase or decrease 
the numbers, and then you reach to the income statement. You deduct that. So at the bottom of that statement, you can see if that statement actually make or if that company actually made a profit or not, right? So then I look at the cash flow statement where this report is the company inflow and outflow of cash. And this is very, very important, not only for business, but also for people so they can know and have cash on hand to pay this expense or to purchase assets. So this reuse some information from the balance sheets and the income statements. And at the bottom of this cash flow statement show the net increase or decrease in cash. So this is very, very important. Generally, this is uh, organized uh, the cash flow the cash flow statement review the cash flow from one of these activities operating investing and financing so the first the operating what it does is to analyze the net income from the income statement and then conciliate with the total amount of cash that was used or perceived from other operating activities and the and broadly speaking most common operating activities are operating assets and liabilities okay where here on the operating uh, assets you have things like accounts receivable some money that you collect uh, from your vendors or providers customers, accounts receivable, inventory, pre uh, property plan and equipment, prepay expense, which are money that the company are expense for uh, things that a company expects to enjoy in the long run. So for example, premium insurance, whether it is health for medical coverage or home or vehicle to protect those belongings might be uh, or it can be disability like lawsuits uh, uh, and liabilities i mean like like liabilities like, like lawsuits disability that prevent you from working uh, or a long-term care uh, such as nurse, nurse home, nurse home healthcare or home healthcare, as well as the life okay, in the event of the policyholder's death. So, another intangible assets uh, or another property operating assets is intangible assets such as patents. And here I'm going to hit the break. Because in patents, I look at the most common patents, uh, thanks to the, the popular mechanic, the 15 most or the 15, 15 patents that change the world. Uh, and here I'm just going to mention a few of them. So, for example, uh, the maglev, this electromagnetic inductive. This, the maglev, the electromagnetic inductic suspension and stabilization system for ground vehicle uh, issued in 1969. The other is the electronic device issued in 2007 uh, or aka the iPhone, the GPS the global positioning system or as their pattern name call the navigation system using satellites with passive ranging technique issue 1974 the crisp gene editing issue in in 2014 
in the 3G. Okay, the 3G, third generation wireless mobile. Uh, and this is something interesting because this patent was issued in 2003. Okay, and there is a consortium or there is a group of organizations that develop standards for mobile telecommunication like this okay it's a partnership project which is an um, this 3g 3gpp is an umbrella term for a number of standards organizations which develop protocols for mobile telecommunications so that's what it is this is it's an umbrella term I, I like that terminology it's an umbrella term for yeah, it's an umbrella term of a standards organization which develop protocol for mobile telecommunications so they are best known for GSM and related to G okay two generations of mobile telecommunication GSM or global system communication including GPRSS and Edge okay UMTS or 3G standards something that is barely known to me okay uh, this is are much more familiar because I was raised here okay I was raised by, with this to uh, with all of this technology uh, but I, be, I was aware of that mobile telecommunication protocol here in the LTL and related on the 4G generation so the LTL and related 4G standards okay and now recently the 5G NR and related 5G standards including 5G Advanced this is something important at least to know because these are patterns that change the world the 3g mobile communication it, it all start with the gsm or this two generation the uh, umts or this as they call universal mobile telecommunication system so the universal mobile telecommunication system mm, so the Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, or this UMTS, and related 3G standards, then you have the LLT, which has uh, and related 4G standards, four generations, and 5G and, uh, and related 5G standards. Okay, so you get this generation. And this was found in 1988. 1988. 1988. Holy moly. <laughs> okay. Very, very interesting. So, again, I'm just mentioning is here the pattern or some couple pattern that changed the world in 20th century. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, those are examples of uh, the patents, right? And after all, patents are exclusive rights to inventors of, so they can manufacture and distribute and sell their invention over a period of time. Another intangible asset, trademark, so image, audio, the signs that uniquely identify this competition from the rest. So for example, the famous quote of Michael Buffer of let's get ready to rumble. And copyrights, which is exclusive rights to 
creator of original works so they can manufacture and distribute their inventions over a period of time. So for example, Netflix, Twitter, uh, Coca-Cola, Goodwill, which is the brand recognition, reputation and customer uh, uh, yeah, customer list and customer followers. Customer relationship, uh, which is that is this, this is another intangible asset, as well as trade secret, which is confidential data that company used to gain some competitive advantage over process, formula, or customer list. Another operating assets investment in affiliates, where the whole point of this is to uh, a company invests into another uh, company's stocks to gain some influence but not full control. So they just want it to earn a return from the investment and or gain competitive advantage. So joint ventures like Post Malone and Crocs is one example of that. It's a partnership between two or more uh, companies to undertake a specific business activity Uh, where each part receives a share of the joint venture. Equity investments, such as uh, like Berkshire, Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway, led by Warren Buffett, which is a holding company that invests primarily in, in a variety of sectors. Energy, retail, real estate. So these equity investments, after all, are companies that, sorry, a company that invests into another company, sorry. So these equity investments are company that purchase significant amount of stake only another company, to raise its influence and potentially it is voice in the another's company management decisions. So Berkshire Hathaway is one of them, uh, as well as the uh, Alphabet, which is the Google's parent company, or the parent's Google company here, the Alphabet. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I think Alphabet Inc. Yeah, that's right. So, okay, so uh, it is the parents company of Google. Okay. Where they invest primarily in uh, technology companies such as Calico, this longevity uh, company, uh, Calico, or uh, Calico Inc. Like this, so Calico. Calico Life Science LLC is an alphabet subsidiary responsible for health research and development, life science and biotechnology. Also, I look at SoftBank, which is a, which is a Japanese conglomerate holding company that invests primarily in technology companies such as WeWork, Uber, Uh, Airbnb, right? <laughs> oh, right. SoftBank gave 107 million to a social apps whose user mostly didn't exist. <laughs> okay. That's not hilarious uh, if you're a soft bank, uh, but 
uh, if you're not it is hilarious so is this this is a Japanese holding company it's a Japanese and uh, company here so it's a Japanese conglomerate right another is the TPG the Texas Pacific groups I don't think he will get that uh, Texas Pacific group okay here uh, which is a private equity firm that invests primarily in areas like real estate healthcare um, another common operating assets is the cash and cash equivalents where for example you have things like money market funds money market funds you got it where these are funds that invest uh, in or in this case they involve the purchase or sell of large volume of very short-term death products uh, such as yeah they this involves the purchase and sale of large volume of very short-term death of products bank acceptance very short-term death issued by banks certified of deposits uh, saving certificate issued by banks with short-term maturity commercial paper risky corporate death in repo this repurchase agreement short-term government securities okay okay repurchase is short-term government security and the u.s treasury is short-term government death issues so okay so the whole point of this money market fund is to get liquidity fast. If the company is running is running off of uh, cash uh, to pay uh, their uh, to meet their financial needs, let's say the working capital, uh, that kind of thing. And then I look at the most common operating liabilities, such as accounts payables money that a company owns to the suppliers and vendors usually something around 30 to 60 days such as raw materials office supplies uh, as well as uh, a service a crew expense money that a company uh, yeah, accrue expense, okay. uh, money that the, that a company uh, or expense in this case uh, in the accrue expense. So there are expense uh, that a company. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> uh, this accrued expense are expense that a company uh, okay. This accrued expense is expense that a company uh, mm, accrued expense involved is. Good and service that a company has received but not yet paid for, such as salaries, uh, in, I guess, such as salaries, rent, utility bills, uh, taxes, deferred revenue, which are obligations that a company has to provide good and service based on money that has been collected, such as subscription service 
gift cards, taxes payable income or income taxes payable, uh, money that a company owns to the government, uh, whether it's uh, to the so this income tax income taxes payable uh, can be corporate taxes, okay, uh, something around twenty one percent if you are in the U.S. Yeah, corporate taxes, uh, sale taxes, which uh, this is very specific to the the location, whether it's the federal taxes or state and state taxes, local taxes, foreign taxes, as well as VAT, this value add tax, which is a tax imposed at the production of any good and service where the customer ultimately pay the full VAT and business along the supply chain remit that portion to the tax. Okay. Uh, excise taxes, so excise, excise tax, okay, which are a special good imposed, it's a special tax imposed on certain goods such as tobacco, alcohol, gasoline, guns. Uh, this is very specific to the US. I'm not sure if, uh, and very specific to the to the country and also the GST this global good this good and service taxes right which is a tax imposed on the value add uh, for domestic consumption so Canada India Australia apply this and then look at withholding taxes, uh, where this is your employee deduct from your gross wage salaries, or from your gross wage, a portion and pays direct to the government. And this is to promote the pay as you earn system, pay as you earn tax systems to fight back uh, evasions. And they're very, very strict in that. So, then I also look at short term borrowings, which is another common operating liabilities. Uh, this is it for a company that wants to raise, that, that, that wants to raise funds to meet their financial cap, to meet their financial needs. Or working capital needs. Uh, this different between the current assets and the current liabilities. Also, is to see if a company is able to have enough liquidity. Again, this is part of the uh, company metrics. So, one of the multiple company metrics to see the financial health short-term borrowings like from banks uh, companies where instead of going to banks you go to these financial institutions whether it's a private equity or venture capital a corporate death they can, the company can issue uh, equity or debt to so raise funds. A corporate debt, uh, trade credit. Uh, here is when sometimes company wants to renegotiate it is repayment schedule with their vendors and suppliers. Line of credit. Uh, as well as 
our outstanding invoice okay so based on your outstanding invoice you're going to ask for a loan okay in a bank uh, or in in a particular individual uh, that once he analyzed that so once that individual analyze your invoice based on the value of that he will going to pay you or he will going to lend you money and then I also look at notes payable uh, which is an agreement between the borrower and the lender that the borrower outline all the terms and conditions of that loan so for example when you ask a loan for a bank, the bank actually generate these notes payable or these temporary notes, notes payable, indicating is the repayment schedules, uh, the principal, the original amount borrow, the principal, the interest, as well as the repayment schedule, among other detail. So banks, a uh, with companies so anytime you ask for financial institutions uh, whether it is a venture capital venture capitalist or a private firm they will generate this notes payable also uh, for uh, individuals uh, so when a company asks for individual or other business, it will generate these notes payable. Bonds is another way to how, how it's being generated. So for example, government bonds or company or corporate bonds, they generate this agreement between the borrower and the lender. In this case, the company and whoever buy that death so chat GPT here let me take a look at the chat GPT uh, for a second because I just want this to ask here for the most common operating liabilities like short-term borrowing or notes payable here a promissory note which is now for individuals that you're gonna do that okay, so individuals or small business that may issue these promissory notes uh, trades payable something that I mentioned uh, and then installment loans so when individual or business borrow money for purchasing assets okay Installment loans is when individual and business borrow money for purchasing assets like vehicle or equipment. They may enter into installment loans agreement. Okay, if you're going to borrow money from... So you borrow money from business... Okay, installment loans is when you're going to borrow... Is when you're going to borrow money from... An individual or business for purchasing assets like vehicles or equipment okay and the another common operating liabilities is warranty obligations which are obligations that a company has to fix or replace a defective product or a product that doesn't meet certain quality standards such as manufacturing warranty extend warranties, service, part, vehicles, software, right? So with that, okay, now that I describe is the most common operations in a business, okay, and how the cash flow actually, uh, the first part of the cash flow review uh, the cash flow from these activities, whether it's our, whether it's operating assets or operating liabilities, okay. So the cash flow now reviewed from that 
it is time now to uh, see how it does that. So what it does is to look at the net income and conciliate with the total amount of non-cash items or items that affect how items that affect the income statement but there is no cash transaction involved such as stock-based compensations uh, and amortizations or uh, depreciations and the total amount of cash that was used or perceived from other operating uh, activities okay then the second part of the cash flow is the investing cash flow where this is generally involved is the purchase of long-term assets it involves the purchase or sell of long-term assets so, so for example long-term assets are property planning and equipment intangible assets investment leasehold uh, improvement so for example if a company decide to sell some license uh, to another company that activity is generated or is registered as a cash inflow because cash was perceived from them however if a company decide to purchase a piece of machinery or an equipment so that activity is registered as a cash outflow so that's pretty simple okay and very very interesting but there is nothing at least from the basics at least from the basics uh, and remember the devil is on the detail so the next section the financing cash flow here okay These sections review how the company raise funds through creditors or investors and pay back through capital markets. And this financial activity involved is the company's long-term liabilities, long-term obligations, and equity, property, ownership. Okay. So most of the time, these activities involve is raising from raising funds for um, investors or creditors, uh, as well as repay debt, paying dividends. So you have here things like the company can issue equity, issue debt, repurchase stocks repayment uh, death paying dividends mm -hmm. okay payment dividends again let me take a look at some example here And this is something important because you combine this chat BPT but with trust sources, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Operating activities. That was on long term. You got it? Mm, okay. Like this. Mm, 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 there you got it. Uh, this is the financial activities and common examples. So issuing, issuing equity. So issuing equity is a company sells shares or a company raise capital by selling shares, ownership, 
issuing debt, a company raised funds by issuing debt instruments, bonds, debtors, or notes payable, repaying debt. So when a company makes principal payments on its outstanding debt, obtaining loans, a company may borrow funds from financial institutions or other lenders to finance their operation, expansions, or capital investments. Payment of dividends. So when a company distributes profits to its shareholders in the form of cash dividends. So payment of dividends. When it distributes profits to shareholders. Repurchasing stocks. So they buy back their own shares from the open market or directly from shareholders. I don't know this this is legal repurchasing stock because they inflate the I don't know if this is legal. Repurchasing stocks. The repurchasing stock. Stock repurchasing dri drive value for shareholders? Of course, of course it drive value from shareholders. Share repurchase versus dividend. Capitalism and share repurchase. Floating string exchange trade funds have also attracted a great deal of attention recently. Biggest ETF in this category. This ETF invests in US company that have repurchased at least 5% of their outstanding share over the previous 12 months. Oh my god. Sherry purchases can impact investors and companies in different ways. Suppose Conglomo has 100 million outstanding shares. Its stock is trading at $10 each, making its market cap $1 billion. Its net income is $50 million, creating an earnings per share of 50 cents, or $50 million divided by 100 million shares. Its price to earnings ratio is 20. That's $10 per share divided by 50 cents. Then King Lama buys back 10 million shares at $10 each. It ends up with 90 million outstanding. Its EPS climbs to 56 cents, or 50 million, divided by 90 million shares. If the P.E. ratio remains 20, share prices will climb to $11.20. That's a 12% stock increase, driven by a reduction in shares. On Conglomo's balance sheet, a share repurchase reduces cash holdings and total asset base by the cash used in the buyback. Shareholder equity on the liability side shrinks as well, causing performance metrics such as return on assets to improve. Repurchases can positively impact investor portfolios. The S&P 500 buyback index measures the performance of the 100 companies with the highest buyback ratios. Over the decades spanning 2003 to 2013, their shares surged 158%, while the rest of the S&P gained 68%. Share buybacks are less certain than dividends, since their value depends on the stock's future price, but they represent a future payoff, and share buybacks can receive better tax treatment. And share buybacks can receive better tax treatment. Are less certain than dividends, since their value depends on the stock's future price, but they represent a future payoff, and share buybacks can receive better tax treatment. Mm, so that's another that's one of the reasons why a lot of people do this you know repurchasing stocks because they are mm, so repurchasing stocks are friendly at tax friendly 
Okay. <laughs> Interesting. The financing activities. In the financing activities. So this is the most common financing uh, examples here. That after all, financing activities involves the company long-term liabilities and shared and equity. So most of the time are raising funds from creditors or investors, repayment uh, or repays death, and pay in re so repays death or distribute profits to shareholders. Okay. So most common examples can be issuing equity. So a company uh, decide to raise capital by selling it is a uh, by selling share of its common stocks to investors. Okay, so they shall share they shall shares to investors issuing equity, issuing death. So company can raise funds by issuing death financial instruments like bonds, debentures, or notes payable. Repaying death, okay. Repaying death, uh, obtaining loans, payment of dividends, repurchasing stocks, leasing. Very, very important concept here because it's an agreement between a company to use. A particular asset, whether it's an equipment, vehicle, building, without taking ownership, with that company, without yeah, with that taking, with that company taking ownership. So this is a form of financing activity. So anytime you rent, is a leasing. So someone else give you, so someone else make you an agreement with you. Yeah, someone else make you an agreement with you. Mm -hmm, totally. So someone else make you an agreement with you. So you can use an asset so you uh, without taking ownership of that, which is a leasing. In mm, convertible death, in convertible death, so some death instruments such as convertible bonds or convertible preferred stock allow the holders to convert their death into equity shares of the company. So this provides the option for debt holders to become shareholders in the future. Mm -hmm. Convertible death. So this provides the options for debt holders to become shareholders in the future. Okay. Convertible death. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the most common example of financing activities. Okay, that after all involved is the company's long-term liabilities and equity. Generally, uh, this in involved is uh, or yeah, these activities involves in raising capital from creditors or investors, repay that and pay or distribute profits to shareholders. This is the three pillars of these financial activities. And also here, so when I just when I look here the cash flow statement analyzing financial activities. Okay. Is this. So after all the financial activity in the cash flow 
focus on how a firm raises capital and pays back to investors through capital markets. So if a company, so this, sec this segment uh, helps investors to see how often a company raises funds and where this money came from. So if a company cash is coming from normal business operations, that's a good sign of a good investment. So if a company is constantly issuing new stocks or taking out of debt, might be an might be an it might be a, an unattractive investment opportunity. Yeah, it might be an unattractive investment opportunity. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. All right. So most common examples are issuing issuing equity. So a company sell shares to so a company wants to raise funds by selling common stocks to investors, usually in an EPO, okay, issuing equity, issuing death. A company can raise funds uh, through debt instruments, bonds, notes payable, uh, repayment debt, obtaining loans, another example of financing activity, obtaining loans, payment of dividends, payment of dividends to shareholders, repurchasing stocks, which makes then the, uh, which makes these stocks raise its value, okay, or is likely to do that. So, repurchasing stock, leasing, which is an agreement that a company gives to another company to use some assets, okay, or to use an asset without taking ownership of that. It's a leasing. In Spanish, it's un arrendamiento. Mm -hmm. It's a leasing. And then convertible debt. Okay? So this provides an option for debt holders to become shareholders in the future. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Okay. And, uh, and then... Okay. And here, and here, after I look at the cash flow statement, the operating activities, investing, and financing, then I saw that they read the footnotes. So this footnote, footnotes are packed with information. Uh, yeah, the footnotes are packed with information. Uh, such as significant accounting policy and practice. So company must disclose uh, the accounting policy, meaning is which accounting principles they're adhering. Okay, so they can show that and to uh, yeah. So. Significant accounting and policies so a company required to so company are required to disclose the accounting policies. Okay, so company are required to disclose the accounting policies uh, and the accounting principles they are adhering. Whether it is the GAAP, okay, the general accounting, generally accepted accounting principle, or the international financial reporting standards okay so the international financial reporting standards or the gap okay generally accepted accounting principle US company must follow this where the EFRS especially since now companies are becoming multinational and to make them much more easy to share this information and also to be transparent. Uh, here, okay, 
which is a set of accounting principles for the financial statement of public company that intends to make the consistent, transparent, and easily comparable around the world. This is the three metrics or the three features, okay, the three characteristics. So to make them, so the whole point of this international financial reporting standards is for companies that are intent to make them transparent, consistent, and make it easily uh, comparable around the world. Okay. So, so this is one of the the significant or the read the footnote. One of the highlight of uh, at the footnote significant accounting policies, income taxes. So this is describe how this in a much more uh, detail how it is done, how it, they pay that the income taxes, pension plans, and other retirement programs. They talk about how this company is taking actions uh, for that and stock options. So the note also contain information about stock options granted to officers and employees, including the method of accounting for stock-based compensation and the effect of the method on report results. Okay, so that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.